G'day, if you've got some addressable LEDs, these are WS2812Bs, also known by their trade name NeoPixels. If you've got some of these and you just want to get some instant gratification powering them from a particle photon, this tutorial's for you. This will work with any number of LEDs up to from just a couple to very, very many. The only constraint that you'll have there is powering them. So for this project, I'm powering everything from a lab supply, but a 5 volt DC power supply will do. I won't cover pairing the photon to your particle account because that's something that we've covered in other tutorials, so I'll link those below. Let's get started. So first things first is to assemble the particle on a breadboard in the way that I have with the picture. Just to clear things up a little bit, we have 5 volts coming in. I've just used a, a DC barrel connector with some screw terminals, so we have our main power leads, these red and black, that's carrying 5 volts. That 5 volts is going straight to our LED strip to power that. And it's also going across the bus of the breadboard to go in the V in of the particle because the particle is a 3.3 volt device. But if we put 5 volts on the V in, we'll be able, the particle will be able to regulate that down to 3.3 volts. Now because the LED strip is a 5 volt device and the particle is a 3.3 volt device, in the middle here I have a logic level converter, which is essentially a voltage translator so that 3.3 volt signals from the particle get translated into 5 volts for the LED strip. Now we can head over to build.particle.io and what we can do here is either copy and paste the example from this, from this code block, but if you want to see where that came from, you could also import it yourself. That's a, an Adafruit example. So we can go down to the Libraries tab on the bottom left, open that up, and we should see an entry for NeoPixel. This is the NeoPixel library. If you don't see that, you can just enter NeoPixel in the search box. We can click on NeoPixel, and this is all the libraries that are required. And we also have three examples. So the example that I'm going to run today is this A-Rainbow example. So we can click that, and I'm going to click Use this example. We could, we could choose to include the library into a project that we're writing, but I'm just opening this example. So I'll click Use this example, and that'll pull it into my local uh, projects. So we can see here now in My Apps, I have something called Infinity Mirror, and below that is the rainbow. That Infinity Mirror is, is an old project. But if I click on this A Rainbow project, we already have it open on the right. And very simply, we have only two parameters that we can really change straight away. The pin that the LED strip is connected to is D2. That's how we've wired it, so that's okay. And we have 10 LEDs um, in our strip uh, defined at this point. So if we upload this code, only 10 LEDs will work, which is fine, but I've got a whole roll here. So I'm going to blow that out to something like, uh, let's just say 100. There's probably at least 100 on the roll. I already have my particle device linked with my account, and you can see the device is connected there. If you need to set the target, you can come down to devices on the bottom left and select which uh, particle device you want to upload to. I already have my target set, so I'm just going to hit this flash button. Whoops. And just waiting for that to complete. We can see some status down the bottom. The, the flash status has been a success. And if we come over onto the bench, we can see the LED strip is now running this cool rainbow demo around what looks to be maybe two thirds of its length. So while we're here, why don't we just take a moment to change how this script works? I'm sure we can find something interesting. Why don't we, why don't we speed it up a little bit? So Let's just have a dive through the code. We have the setup and then we have the loop and the only thing that's running is rainbow with some argument 20. If we go down to rainbow, where rainbow is defined, that's just below. And we can see that the argument that's going in is called wait and we're delaying for wait. So that 20 is going to be a delay in milliseconds between frames of animation. So if I set that to one and reflash the particle, the, the particle photon. Let's, let's see if that behaves as expected. This should have behaved much faster now. Just wait for that flashing to complete. And there we go. So now the, now the whole thing is, is going full disco. So that's pretty cool. So there you have it, a quick start guide to getting your addressable LED strip to go full disco. I'll see you next time.